Hello ROS developers and welcome to the ROS questions and answers video series. If you want to learn anything about ROS, this is your channel. ROS navigation, ROS with drones, ROS for autonomous cars, everything ROS is here. Learn ROS step by step and push your ROS learning in just 10 minutes of video. I am Alberto Zquerro and today we are going to be checking a question I found in ROS answers, very interesting, about global and local cost maps. And we are going to try to do an example to explain a little bit this and try to answer the question. But before anything else, remember to visit our Robot Ignite Academy, our online academy where you will find practical online ROS courses using simulated robots. No installation required. You will find a link to the academy on the video description. Now, let's start with the video itself. So, let me close this. So as I've said, we are going to be checking this question by Ivan Sanchez, who says, Hi, I was looking at the navigation stack of ROS and I don't understand the purpose of the global and local cost map. What is the aim of each one and what kind of information is stored in each one? Thank you so much for your help. Okay, so we are going to try to explain this a little bit. We are going to be building an example. And for that, we are going to use RDS, as always. So I'm going to be starting this project, the Cosmaps QA. I have created here. So let's open this project and wait a few seconds until everything uh, loads. So there we are, great. And well, as you will see, uh, basically here what I have is a simulation with the navigation stack uh, with some packages for running the navigation stack. Here you can see the localization, mapping and path planning packages, which are for the summit robot. So yeah, let's just start the summit simulation. There we are. And yeah, and here we are going to be launching, once the simulation is loaded, the path planning Movies launch and let's start opening as well a graphical tools which we are going to use in order to visualize RVs. So let's open it in a new in a new tab so that it is a little bit bigger. Okay. There we are. Great. So let's go back to RDS. Let's check the simulation. It's already load. Excellent. So here we have our summit simulation here in, in this in this apartment or in, in this office so yeah let's launch the navigation stack with this launch file and we are going to open another shell for launching our visa as well As you may already know, where this is used, is used in order to visualize, for instance, the cost maps, among other things, also the plans, TFs, many, many things. So, yeah, let's start our this. There we are. Okay, the navigation stack is already launched. Now we will have here RVs, there it is. And let's, uh, I'm going to load a configuration where I have the things I'm interested in. Uh, it's here. Let's load this configuration. And there we are, great. So here we basically have, here we have the static map Let's leave it like this. We have the robot model, the map, and the path. So I'm going to add another one here. Here, in this one, I have the global cost map, as you can see here. And I'm going to add another display for the local cost map. I'm going to add it right here. There we are, excellent. Let, let me change this to another visualization so that it's it's seen better. Excellent. Okay, so what do we have here? Basically, now at this point we are visualizing th three things. We are visualizing the map, the regular map, we are visualizing the global cost map, and we are visualizing the local cost map. So let's go by parts. Let's 
take out everything. Uh, sorry. There we are. Okay, so here we have the robot alone. So first of all, what I'm going to add is to activate the map display. Here it is. So this is the map that has been built using the gmapping package. Yes? So here in, the, in, in my mapping package, I have created this map. Let's download it. And let me open it. And here we have it. So as you can see, this map is exactly the same as the one I have here. Yes? And this map has been created using the gmapping package. If you have been uh, checking the navigation stack, you probably know about the gmapping package, which is basically used to create a map like this one. Yes? So let's move this a little bit, like this. Excellent. So as you can see, these maps are, oops, let me rotate it, there we are. So these maps are exactly the same, yes? And this is the map that has been created by the gmapping package, yes? Then, let's now activate the global cost map. So what is this? What is this? this is very similar, as you can see. Let me deactivate now the normal map. So this is very, very similar, as you can see. Um, I think I have closed my map. Let me open it again to have it here. Plus, plus. Okay. So as you can see, it's very, very similar as well. And uh, this is the global cost map. This I have right here. And this global cost map is created from the static map. Yes? So using the, using the data we have in our static map, which is this one, this one, we build the global cost map, which is basically the same with some inflations. So we take the lines that are declared here in this map and we inflate them. Yes? So basically, as you can see here, we have three colors, white, uh, black, and gray. So the everything that is in color gray is unknown space. We don't know what what uh, what is there. The white space is space which is considered as completely free. So the robot can freely go through the white space. And the black lines, the black pixels, are uh, fully occupied space. So the robot cannot go, cannot walk through that through this black space, yeah? Then this data here in the static map is the one detected by the sensor. But then now here in the, in the global cost map, what, what we do is to make this bigger because we need to take into consideration the size of our robot, what is known as the footprint uh, of our robot, yes? So even though the current wall is here, we need to add an inflation which depends on the radius of, of, the, of the footprint of the robot. Yes? And the most important thing I would say is that the global cost map, this cost map, is created from the data that is here in the static map, in the regular static map which is built with the gmapping package. Yes? So global cost map is generated from the map that you have, from the PGM file that you generate with the mapping. Now, let's add here the global cost map. So what is this? This is completely different, yeah? So this, the global cost map, this is the global cost map of the, here. And this global cost map is not built from the data taken from the, st from the static map. It has nothing to do with this data. The, the local cost map 
is built from the data that it takes from the sensors, in this case, from the laser. Yes? So the laser, this robot, the Summit XL robot, let's put it here, the Summit XL robot has a laser, and this laser is publishing into a topic the data that is capturing. Then from this data, we generate the local cost map. Yes? So basically, see, basically this is the main difference. The global cost map is generated from the data of the static map. And the local cost map is generated from the data of the readings of the sensors of the robot. So, for instance, if I randomly add now something to my simulation, it won't be considered in the global cost map, yeah? But it will be considered on the local cost map, yeah? So for instance, if I now add something here, a cube in front of the robot, the local cost map, as you can see, is now detecting this cube, yeah? And then, let me see, it's added as well, yeah, in this case, it's also added to the global cost map, yeah, but, but yeah, the main difference you need to take into account is this one, yeah, then, okay, let's do another, let's do an example, okay, for this, of course, you would need to, to investigate a little bit into the parameters, which we have them here, and layers and everything, but pff, that's too much to explain in one video, honestly. So here in the path planning uh, package, I have many configurations. Here, th these are the parameters for the global cost map, as you can see, and here I have the parameters for the local cost map. Yeah, so um, as you can see, this uh, the local cost map is not reading from a static map, yeah? And it's using the obstacle layer and the inflation layer. And in my case, these parameters are reading from the static map, which is in the map frame, and we have the static layer, the inflation layer, and in this case, we also have the obstacle layer. So any obstacle that we add, it will be also added in the global cost map. But then, okay, and what is the other big difference here? It's in, in the plans, in the planners. So you may have already heard that there are two planners, the global planner and the local planner, yeah? Then let's show them here. So here I have the, here I have the global planner and let me, at another path display right here where I'm going to put the local plan. I think it's this one. And let's change the color of it to, I don't know, blue for instance. Okay. So now let's send our goal to our robot, let's send a navigation goal somewhere around here. And as you can see, we have two lines here. We have this green line, which is the global plan, and we have a smaller line here in blue. As you can see, right in front, let me zoom a little bit more. Here we have a, a small line, which is in blue, which is the local plan. Yeah, here, we, here you can see it. Then what is the difference between this? Obviously, uh, the green line, which is the global plan, is calculated taking into account the data from the global cost map. So only the data from the global cost map, not this data, yeah? So the first plan, the global plan, in, the one in green, 
is calculated from the global cost map. Then the local cost map, which is the small one, the, the, the small blue line here that we are visualizing here, is calculated from the data of the local cost map. Yes? So this is another big difference. And basically the local the local planner what does is to is to divide the big plan which is calculated at the beginning into smaller parts. So let's say that for instance um, we start planning this is rotating here in order to find the final goal. Uh, so for instance we send our robot to go oh no let me see let me send it here wait far away then a plan is generated but what happens here a global plan is generated but what happens if I put an obstacle in the middle of this this plan would no longer be available, yeah? So now it's starting to do this, but now what happens if I take this and... Oops, sorry. I move it here, in front of the, of the path. So for now, the obstacle is not being detected, so the plan is still valid. But at some point, when it's closer, this will be detected by the, by the sensors, and it will appear here in the local cost map, you'll see. Here we have it. And then, you have seen that this plan has changed in order to be able to avoid this obstacle. Yeah? So, the local cost map detects this obstacle with the laser and the local plan as well detects this and recalculates the path of the global plan. Yeah? In order to avoid this new obstacle that on a first point it was not taken into account. Yeah, because the global plan is built from the first static map where this object was not present there. So, yeah, I think that will be all for this video. Uh, I don't know if I have explained myself quite good. I hope, yes, I hope you have at least understood the, the main concepts of this. And, well, if you have liked the video, please give us a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to our channel and press the bell for a new video every day. And either you like the video or not, please share your thoughts and questions and feedback in the comments area. We love feedback because we love to improve and we want to improve. So goodbye and see you in the next video.